And one thing about men is that what we're looking for is intimacy. Like literally someone who knows us inside and out and loves us anyway. But if you never reveal who you really are, you can never, ever have intimacy. Mm, amen to that. You understand what I mean? Man. You can't. It's impossible. Because you have to know who you are. Absolutely. You have to re- share who you are. But the game is not to share who you right. are. So you can have sex all day. Mm-hmm. Lots of sex. Because that's still part of the image. But it doesn't have anything to do with intimacy. Right. Anything to do with someone. This is why... This is why you always love your mom. Because your mom knows who you are. Right, right. Everything. Everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? She cleaned, she cleaned your nose. Yeah, she yeah. wiped your butt. She, yeah. got, she knows when you lie. She knows uh, the bad you. She knows the good you. Yeah. And she loves you anyway. That's why you, mom, mom is queen of the world. Mm-hmm. But you didn't tell everything to this chick. No. Nah. To this lady. <laughs> yeah. To your wife. Mm-hmm. Do years of therapy. I finally went in to deal with these issues, man. Mm. Now, the thing about in my culture, um, where I grew up, the, no, one, the, no one does therapy. The mind was you can't cure crazy. Mm. That was the phrase that was said. Hey, you can't cure crazy. And then you're talking about in religious circles, they were like, oh, you're going to get them demons. The demons are going to come if you go to that psychology. They're going to mess with your brain and make you crazy. So my father, there was one time my father went to a psychologist to get help for his alcoholism. And a week later, the, psych, the psychologist jumped off a bridge. Oh, and I was no. like, what? Wow. Huh? Oh, man. He that's... jumped off a bridge, man. And I said, okay, that don't work. That's, that's not going to work. Oh, so, man. no. And I thought these guys are going to make me crazy. So that was the thing. Like, when, it, when that broke for me, when my wife left, I was at my wits in. Like, I said, man, I got to try this therapy stuff, you know, because I'd heard enough about it mm-hmm. over the years. What was the greatest lessons therapy has taught you, though? <sighs> man, assembly required. Okay? When I say this, we all think we as men or people are as good as we are. We, we just take me as I am. We make mm-hmm. songs about it. Mm-hmm. You take me just as I am. No, 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 no. <laughs> but the problem is, this thing is, it's like, it's not anybody else's job to assemble you. You are like Legos, okay? Legos come in a box. You shake the box, it's, look, it's just pieces. <laughs> and in a com- very competitive world, people tell you, you're broke. Hey man, look at your box. You broke it. But what I learned is that you're never, you're not broken. You're just not finished. Mm -hmm. You, it's up to you to assemble yourself. You have to work on you. You have to take off the parts that are bad or broke or that don't fit. Because nothing's broken. It's just things don't fit. And you pull it off and you put it back together the right way. It's like when you go, but you gotta go deep, mm-hmm. and you gotta go down with, 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 wounds, with computers. Yeah. It's a bit with with uh, um, with property or, or, or the minerals. It's atoms, mm-hmm. and and with human beings, it's genes. I mean, it's down into the core. You get one little gene, and you can rebuild yourself. That's what I got from therapy. I was mm. like, holy cow! You can take the bad out. It's not automatic. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have said it's either nature versus nurture. But nurture always works. No matter what your nature started out right. as. You understand what I mean? Like, nurture is, you're in the woods. Like, nature is, you're born naked in the woods. But nurture is, you learn to, build, to make a coat uh-huh. and put it on. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. can build a house. You can build a building. Yeah. You can build a whole society. That's what nurture does. I said, wait a minute, you don't have to stay naked in the woods. But my mentality was what I had to stay naked in the woods. Mm -hmm. But that's why I was born, so that's it. Was there a moment in therapy where you, whether it was 12 years ago or more recently, where you had an aha moment or something you felt shift inside of you? There's, I've been doing therapy 
for the last year, almost every two weeks for the last year. And I've done it at different stages over the last 10 years, but not consistently until the last year. And there was one moment for me where something shifted. I had an aha moment and like the pain in my chest went away and it hasn't come back since. And I finally felt like I was assembling myself and rebuilding myself up to a place where I could feel that peace, where I don't have to. There's always something inside of me that knows like I could turn a switch at any moment if I wanted to into that type of personality and that rageful energy. But I also don't want that to ever come out. And so I keep myself in a level of peace. Was there anything like that during therapy that you're like, oh, it, it actually... Not in my my thoughts, I can think it, but I feel something different about the rage. Man, you know what hit me out of everything? One of the most powerful, powerful moments was my realization of what shame really was. Now, you gotta understand, growing up, it was, shame was used as a tool. Mm-hmm. Everybody used it, from the church, to sports, to and you should be shame. Hey, you you should be shame and let that guy beat you uh, on the yeah. on the outside. You should. How could you let that happen? Or in church, like, oh, man, you should be so shame to even think those thoughts. How could you think that? And you're mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I'm a, uh, you sh- and shame was a motivator. Okay, it goes right along with the revenge movie. It starts with shame. It's mm-hmm. a shame, 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 and shame tells you you are. Bad, okay, in your default resting state, you're a bad person. Mm-hmm. So you have to do all these things to be good, which means it's only in your efforts. You 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 only get good things by working for it you know, because just in your resting state, you're bad. So let's create this person that covers all this shame up. Mm-hmm. So you create an image. Mm-hmm. And you build that image and you worship it. Yeah. And but the bad you is still back here lurking and ready. And ooh, it's just ooh. And that's yeah. listen, even in church, people were like, man, you know, you could feel it, like, oh, don't be thinking about that, or oh, you're just gonna snap. You know, it's like, let's with us just get our minds on the Lord, you know. And shame was used that way. But in therapy, it blew my mind. I said, hey man. Guilt is good. Shame is no good. Mm-hmm. And I went, they said, guilt says you did something wrong and you not have to correct it. <clears throat> yeah, take accountability and yeah. But shame just says you're just wrong. Who you are, are wrong as a human. You yeah. just, that's you. And I said, wait a minute, I'm good. Mm. I'm good in my resting state. And one thing that got me in therapy that hit me, man, oh, I love this. I, I put it in the book, there's a picture of me at about six years old. No teeth, no two front teeth, and I'm sitting here, and I'm in, it's just the cutest little picture. Like, look at this kid. And I had to ask myself, I said, is that kid bad? Uh, is that kid bad? Wow. I said, no. I said, but I'm that kid. I'm still that kid, mm-hmm. Lewis. I'm still him. There was no point, at no point in time did I change from being that kid. Right. Understand, uh-huh. you're still that kid. Uh-huh. And wait, that's like calling a baby evil. Bad and wrong, and yeah. How are babies evil? How is that? You right. can't. You, and I said, holy, I got this all well, and that, that was the moment. Like in therapy, I was like, <sighs> look, "Look at this! I'll show you this." Oh, talk to me. <laughs> look at this. Yes, yes, that's you. That's and you me. keep it right there. Uh-huh. Listen, I keep it. I keep that same kind of picture. That say I put it in the book so you everybody could see it. But I keep it on my desktop. Wow. On my computer, and I'm like, and you know what? I talk to it, man. Dude, I love this. I love you because I've been talking about this with my audience about how I've had this for a year now on my phone. I keep meaning to change it recently because I feel like I've finally healed that hurt five, six, seven-year-old child that was inside of me. I've been doing the work on healing that. And it's been so much more powerful because it's not, I'm not coming from a place of hurt and reaction from that early childhood moments. It's from a healed place and rebuilding that 
uh, foundation. And it sounds like that's what you've been doing. Dude, how long have you been doing that for? Oh my God, years. Really? <laughs> I never stopped. Really? I talk to him all the time. But first of all, when you look at a six-year-old, or no, let's go even earlier, three, two. When they fall down, do you go, oh man, you should know how to walk by now. You should know how to do all this stuff by now. No, no. You, but you don't do that to yourself. Mm -hmm. As an adult, you don't give yourself another go. You don't say, I, what I, learned, I was merciless to myself, man, mm -hmm. because I was bad. And you, man, how could you do that, man? Get yourself together. Nah, nah, nah. Cuss yourself out. I used to cuss myself out. But then what happened is I would cuss everybody else out. Right, right. Because everybody else. You, you, they're held by your same standard. Again, projection. Of course. And you would never give yourself forgiveness mm -hmm. and relax and, hey, man, you tried. It's okay. Yeah. No. Dude, talking to that little boy. And I remember just going, dude, that's you. And you got to talk to yourself like mm -hmm. that. With love, with care. You with... are good. Yeah. You're not bad. And... But you got to understand, in a very competitive world, <laughs> people use that. Oh, of course. And what happens is, is people can tell you that you are. And that's the world I was in. Mm -hmm. The world I was in, the drug dealer was like, hey, man, you ain't nothing but a Or in, go to church, and they say, you a sinner. Mm -hmm. You ain't nothing. Right. And you just, uh-uh. You don't feel nothing. You don't have nothing. This stuff I was told when I was little. Mm-hmm. So I, because I don't feel nothing. Right. So now, I can, I can't have it. You understand, man? Well, I grew up where the rapture was was dangled in front of us at any moment, where if you did anything wrong, and the rapture was going to come, and the, the rapture was was when Jesus was going to come and take all the saints up into the sky, and if you weren't right you would be get left behind. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was you would be left to be, you know, tortured by the devil. That was the whole, and this, this is stuff, you know, as a four year old, they would teach. And I was like, oh my God, like, but it was used to control us. Right. You wanna be good, cause Jesus gonna come back and he ain't gonna take you. And I was like, oh no, why wouldn't he take me? You got, man, you're talking about a life of horror. I spent most of my years, young years, scared. Yeah because it was one of those things where the devil had more power than God did. Cause it was like, hey, the devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the devil could do all kinds of things. I was like, well, where is God gonna step in? Right. You know what I mean? That was my mindset. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, wow, they right. got powerful, right? Oh, but the devil, man, you gotta, he gonna get you. And you're like, oh man, like, or Jesus was people's hitman. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, oh, he gonna knock you out. You're like, but I was just, and man, you gotta understand that framework created so much shame mm -hmm. because I was like, everything I did, I was like, oh no, I'm bad. I'm going, oh, and I would try, I would pray and mm -hmm. try to get back and other things. But you, you, you know, you, you keep, you keep an impossible standard. It's so hard, man. <laughs> you can't keep up. Nah, man. And I, there's a lot of people who understand this. Yeah, of you course. know what I mean. Who've been yeah. manipulated by 100%. these kind of places and this kind of stuff and. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things where I, going to therapy though, I was like, oh my God, that has nothing to do with me.